Hey, marijuana traders and investors, welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. Today is Friday, December 4th. Happy Friday. Hope everyone is doing well. And in today's video, we're going to discuss a historic vote that just came through from the House. So taking a look at this article, U.S. House passes historic bill to legalize marijuana at the federal level, but the Senate looms. So this was uh, about four minutes ago. I think that's a little bit delayed yet, 20 minutes ago. So I posted this in our, for our members. Looks like we were having a little bit of a sell the news event. USMJ didn't really get affected by it too much, but Canadian MJ, as soon as that video came out about 20 minutes ago, or sorry, that article came out, you could see we dumped CGC, got close to resistance. So it was a nice top fish uh, on CGC as well, but we were approaching resistance. So it was a potential for a sell the news, but we are looking to rebound from that sell off now. ACB, same thing, got up over $12 and then instantly over 11% drop on that news. So let's take a look at the article here. So we knew that the House was probably going to pass it and that's likely why it became a sell the news type of event because most people were expecting it to, to get approved. So once it got approved, people locked in those profits. So in a groundbreaking vote, the U.S. House of Representatives on Friday passed a comprehensive bill that removes marijuana from the Controlled Substances Act, ending the federal government's decade, decades old prohibition on the plant. Lawmakers in effect voted to legalize marijuana by approving the Social Justice Focused Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement More Act by a margin of 228 to 164. So a huge margin in favor of. After an hour of debate, a handful of Republicans voted for the measure. The vote, while largely symbolic because the bills must pass the Senate, comes only two days after the United Nations took a historic step as well as removing it as a less dangerous drug. So this is good. This bodes well for the cannabis space and cannabis bowls because we saw that the jobs report came out today in the U.S. It was a huge miss. So just taking a quick peek at that. You can see non-farm payrolls rose 245K in November versus 469 expected. So we had a miss there. Forget what it was the last time. Just want to take a quick peek at that though. So ADP. Let's see here. Payrolls. It was 877 K. So came in quite a big miss there. So going back to what I was saying, this is good. It bodes well for the cannabis bulls because we have a drop in jobs. We also have the cases spiraling out of control. We have stimulus, um, a lot of uh, benefits ending on the end of this month. We also have, and my phone's going ballistic here, but uh, trying to keep my train of thought. So we have benefits expiring at the end of the month. We have potential for new stimulus. There was also talk about stimulus being in there for cannabis companies and, and different policies regarding the cannabis space. So we'll see if there's any development on that as well. The U.S., is hurting right now, their economy is hurting, they're losing jobs. In my opinion, legalizing marijuana would create tons of jobs. We know that Biden, the Biden administration is all about creating more jobs. He was under the Obama administration, which they created the most jobs ever as a presidential campaign and presidential um, elect and vice president, vice president and president. So as those two, Obama and Biden created a huge, huge um, influx in jobs that was basically passed on to Donald Trump and Donald Trump likes to take a lot of credit but my personal opinion I think it had to do more with Obama administration so with that um, we're looking at Mexico potentially legalizing we're looking at the US potentially legalizing Israel legalizing Canada so if we get more and more the US isn't going to want to be late to the party in my opinion they should she should pass this through the Senate as soon as they can, but I'm not a politician, but they do not want to be late to the party. I know that, you know, they've got a ton of people, 330 plus million people. So once they do uh, start to legalize it, they're going to have, you know, it's not going to be like they're completely behind because they're going to have such a huge population to market it to, but, and just, you know, a strong economy and a very wealthy economy as well. And, I think it's good. I think it's really, really, the, the odds are increasing, even though the Senate may shoot it down. But with, you know, cases from the global situation that we have spiraling out of control, multiple countries looking to legalize, 
it could potentially be ramped up. This legalization could be expedited. And uh, I think it's pertinent, in my opinion, that they, they, they rush this through as quickly as possible. And like I said, just the, the whole situation that we have in the economy just accelerated that, in my opinion. And also the uh, United Nations also removing it looks really well. Opponents of the Moore Act criticized Democrats for prioritizing marijuana during the global situation that we have, crisis, and voiced concerns about health risks for youth. The legislation could potentially open up an already fast-growing multi-billion dollar industry to billions of dollars of additional business opportunities in interstate commerce over time. However, the vote Friday will prove to be emblematic unless Democrats gain control of the U.S. Senate by winning off two races in Georgia on January 5th. So we could see if, if the Democrats get a hold of the Senate, this is pretty much a shoe in And we should know that by the first week of January, hopefully, if not the second week for sure. Even then, more conservative Senate might be resistant to such a major change in federal marijuana policy. I've been waiting for this historic moment for a long time. It is happening Friday because it has been demanded by the voters, by facts, and by momentum behind the issue. U.S. Republic U.S. Republican uh, Earl Blumauer, co-chair of the Congressional Cannabis Caucus and a Democrat from Oregon, said in a statement dis uh, distributed late Thursday. The House Judiciary Committee advanced the bill a year ago in what was seen as a landmark development. So what's misunderstood about the Moore Act, the measure would, would create a federal licensing or federal regulatory framework. So wouldn't. States would, however, continue to regulate marijuana as they say, see fit. So this would allow for potential for uplisting. It would allow companies to get access to traditional funding methods. The MORE Act decriminalizes and deschedules cannabis, said Randall Mayer, the executive director of the Global Alliance for Cannabis Commerce. It would allow state legal businesses to operate in a federally legal environment with business tax deductibility and access to legal processes and permits states to set their own cannabis policy be it total prohibition or not. And that also opens the floodgates and the doorway to potential uh, Canadian LPs entering across the border as well. Steve Fox, strategic advisor of the Cannabis Trade Federation said, the MORE Act is a wonderful piece of legislation that would end cannabis prohibition at the federal level and take some critical and much needed steps toward restorative justice. It would provide major benefits to Canada businesses, cannabis businesses, which would become legal at the federal level. Businesses, he said, would have a greater access to financial service, like I just mentioned, and be freed from Section 280E of the Federal Tax Code, which currently prevents marijuana companies from taking deductions for ordinary business expenses. The MORE Act does not, however, establish a regulatory framework for cannabis at the federal level. So from an industry perspective, the MORE Act is just one step in a longer process, Fox said. Vincent Slawoski, a cannabis attorney at Harris Bricken, said, in Portland, Oregon, echoed Fox, noting that licensed marijuana commerce will remain in place until changed by states or local jurisdictions. So it's still going to be up to the individual states, but we had five states just legalizing and, and rec recreationalizing marijuana um, in this past election. So again, that bodes well for the chances of this passing as well in 2021. What the MORE Act actually does is remove marijuana from control under the Federal Controlled Substances Act while adding a 5% federal excise tax, uh, similar to alcohol and whatnot, and tacking on key provisions like expungement for past marijuana convictions under federal law. So anybody who's behind bars or serving uh, a sentence for cannabis-related, minor-related charges, uh, they would be expunged, right? and forgiven. So as with alcohol, there will be no federal business licensing element. He also emphasized that there would be a lot of benefits here for state licensed cannabis businesses, including everything from banking options to tax relief under Internal Revenue Service Code 280E to federal trademark availability. Huge. Experts also noted that they expect a number of federal agencies such as the Food and Drug Administration, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Department of Treasury and Department of Agriculture to weigh in on various issues, including health claims, cultivation standards, and banking issues. What about concerns that the MORE Act would accelerate the decline of medical marijuana markets? So Narman Jarris, Executive Vice President of Business Development of Michigan, based exclusive brand, said she heard such fears before Michigan launched its adult use program in 2019. But she said exclusive brands, which is also two dispensaries in Michigan, has actually found that medical marijuana sales have remained strong and many adult use customers 
then started getting medical cards to reap benefits such as lower taxes. Jairus believes that there's a legacy of commitment to provide access to MMJ patients, so medical marijuana patients. The MORE Act has social justice provisions, but they are, enough, are they enough to increase industry equity? So again, you can read this on your own time, but myth or truth, some multi-state marijuana operators would prefer the status quo rather than federal, mer federal legalization. Myth, according to Florida-based operator Juicy Holdings, we at Juicy stand in proud support of the MORE Act. Why wouldn't they, in my opinion? I mean, it, it kind of gives them um, a benefit because Canadian cannabis uh, companies and other companies can't go into the United States and start selling their products. So it increases their footprint in their own backyard, so to speak. But I mean, you're going to get uplisted to major exchanges. People with retirement accounts or registered accounts are able to purchase it. A lot of people have just, you know, golden rules that they follow that they don't invest in tickers over the OTC. So we'll have to keep an eye on, on that. But in my opinion, I think it's, it's, Oh, it's a very positive thing for the space. So ACB still trying to bounce, looking to set a five minute higher low here and higher high into a five minute uptrend. APHA lost the five minute uptrend, looking to do the same, already starting five minute consolidation. CGC looking to break the new highs, not even concerned about daily consolidation, or sorry, five minute consolidation. Cron, Already set the five minute higher low, it looks like looking to break to new highs. Got to deal with EMA 12 and 26 there as well. Looks like Hexo starting the bounce as well. Got a couple of inside bars there on the five minute. We'll be watching that. If we break bullish, we'll look to the new highs. If we break bearish, we'll look to a five minute higher low compared to the low of 106, which is now the new low of the day. After that, we have support at $1, which was a previous low here and also psychological support. And one thing I just wanted to highlight here on Hexo, I did a video on this on Hexo as well. You can check that out. They just took market share away from Canopy Growth uh, in terms of number of, ben of um, beverages sold. So I think uh, Canopy was at 33%. And you can check out that video on my channel. But uh, Hexo with 35% and, and Canopy had a six-month head start. So congrats to the Bulls. Looks like we're starting a weekly bull cross here as well on Hexo with EMA 12 crossing through EMA 26. If that were to happen, we have increasing volume here. We have the most record volume on week for Hexo. And we still got about two hours left in the trading day. We're in a monthly uptrend. We're in a weekly uptrend. We're in a daily uptrend. We did start daily consolidation. So we're, look for, we're just looking for a daily higher low now. And we got lots of room to form that. We also have EMA 12 and 26 support there as well. Taking a look, I did want to bring up Sundial as well. Sundial down 7%, but look at those charts. Sundial, so there's rumor that Sundial and Hexo might be merging. But look at that chart from Sundial. Cup and handle didn't even really get fine resistance, just blasted through. Now we're looking to set a daily higher low. Now look at Hexo. Those charts are exactly the same. Obviously, the price levels are different and the price is, is uh, you know, uh, completely different. We're looking at sundials at 70, 71 cents essentially and Hexo at 110 now, but remove the price and those candles look exactly the same on the daily. Bulls starting daily consolidation, need to change that hourly trend back to the bulls. So once we confirm an hourly uptrend, we can be confident that the daily higher low is set but we have resistance at 133. And then after that, I believe it was 144, 150 psychological, and then $2 psychological as well. Another thing I wanted to bring up here, I mentioned this in my video for, on Hexo earlier today as well. They have earnings coming up on the 14th of December. And next week on the 11th, they have the uh, AGM, the annual general meeting, and they'll be voting on the reverse split. Management has the right, I guess, to decrease that to a four to one split or an eight to one is what they propose. We'll see if there's any change. We'll see if it gets denied. Personally, I would like to see it denied and then um, see a lot of people flock into the stock because they would no longer be worried about the overhang of a reverse split. And then we have the next day right after that. So back to back trading days before market open on the 14th, we have their earnings. So again, they just took the lead from Canopy at, from uh, cannabis infused beverages sales. So I would expect big 
things on this earnings report as they will have a couple of months of beverages sales under their belt. And then I expect even bigger things from the next one because I know that they've just been flying off the shelves in, uh, in November and December here. So from what we have so far in December. And then we have earnings before the market open on the 14th and a webcast conference. You can check out video a little bit more in depth on that. But you can see here we are, we did have a golden cross and the 100 day is now crossing through the 200. We have the 100 at 74 and the 200 day moving average at 73. So extremely bullish chart, haven't seen anything like this. This bullish in a long time, we don't have any resistance on the weekly moving averages up until 283. And just out of curiosity, I do wanna bring up the sun, because they're so similar, I do wanna bring up the chart here. So not even close on the moving averages though. We could be setting up for a potential cross here of the 50 and the 100, but not holding my breath on the golden cross as we are quite a ways away. MACD blasting off, just looking for a daily high or low. Let's take a look at some other names here as well. So ACB still pulling back, looking for that five minute high or low. APHA still pulling back, CGC, Cron, Hexo now pulling back as well. Looks like we broke that inside bar bearish. So just looking for a five minute higher low compared to 106. And taking a look at the rest. So TGOD, we had some dilution news down about 15% today. We had Oxley up over 10%, PCLO up 6%. I know that one's been very popular amongst traders lately. We have TAT down 4%, CXXI down 3%, almost 4%. We have Ian continuing its monstrous move up 30%, or I think it was up over 50% today. At a high of 60 set, 66 cents, so congrats to the bulls. MedMen over double digits, MJNA, TOG, Virio up almost 5%. So it looks like USMJ is getting the majority of the gains today. And we had a little bit of a sell the news after this, this uh, article came out. So we'll see how we end the day today and into the weekend. Obviously, this is going to find some major resistance once it gets to the Senate. But again, I like the odds given the fact that Mexico is legalizing, Israel's is legalizing, Canada's already legalized as a G7 country. Uh, the United States had just had five states legalize medical and recreational marijuana. Um, we have the United Nations with a historic vote to re remove it as a less dangerous drug. Everything is just pointing in the right direction at this point. And with the jobs coming in at a miss, the United States just, their economy hurting right now. I really think that the chances of this passing have increased significantly. And I think it would be great for the US economy as a whole and especially the American people. So me being from Canada, this is just my opinion. Um, again, I'm just an unbiased outsider looking in and I think 2021 is going to be a historic year and I'm really looking forward to it. Let me know in the comments below if you believe that 2021 is gonna be the year of federal legalization in the United States. Let me know if there's any other tickers that you'd like covered. Um, this video is a little bit longer. I'm gonna do another daily market video at the end of the day. so. Make sure to subscribe, like the channels, and tick the bell to be notified when that video goes live later on today. So with that, thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you a little bit later on for another daily market recap video.